Hyperalgesia is a condition which is seen very commonly in the patients of chronic pain. In this video, I'm going to tell you what is hyperalgesia and what is the mechanism of hyperalgesia as it is very important to discuss hyperalgesia in the pain physiology. Welcome back to HM Learnings. I am Harshita, the creator of HM Learnings, where students come to clear their concept and to get the study material. Make sure that you have subscribed my channel. You can also follow HM Learnings on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter for daily updates. We have also started uploading all our content on website known as SlideShare. But because of some technical issues from few weeks, we are not able to upload the slides. But we will promise you that soon when the issue will be resolved, we are going to upload all of our slides on the slide share and we will also share the link of all the videos slides on slide share link on the description box so you can check our slides through that link also so this so by this we can start our today's video that is about a very important phenomenon a very important condition which is seen in the patients of the chronic pain Sometimes students think that the hyperalgesia is uh, the, the defini only the definition will came. Uh, for the undergraduates, hyperalgesia definition is very very okay with it. Nobody is going to ask you the mechanism most probably. But sometimes it happens that we have actually remember the definition but when examiner asks us we forget it so for that if you know little bit about the mechanism of the hyperalgesia it will be there in your mind forever but for the postgraduates it is very important to know the definition as well as the full mechanism of the hyperalgesia and if you are working on the patients with the chronic backache or the patient which are which uh, who are actually complaining again and again of the pain so this condition must be known for those patients for de for dealing with those patients so uh, first we will look at the mechan uh, the definition of hyperalgesia and then we are going to see that why it happens and how it happens so uh, hyperalgesia algesia means what the pain and hyper means zada so uh, the condition in which the patient is feeling a hyper pain if you would say more pain the patient becomes more and more uh, responsive or you can say more and more sensitive to the pain so what happens that when you have when the patient is having continuous exposure to the noxious stimulus continuous exposure to such a stimulus which is causing a pain that area of the pain which is exposed to the pain again and again will become responsive will become hyper responsive and hypersensitive to the pain so that occurs why because there is increase in the sensitivity sensitivity there is actually increasing the sensitivity of the receptors the nerve receptors okay so the patient is feeling you can say very much pain hypersensitivity is there in the pain so why how it feels because we are going to feel the things by the help of the receptors so definitely when there is increase in the sensitivity of the pain the sensitivity of the receptors will be increased only then the patient will be able to feel more pain so hyperalgesia basically involves the increase in the sensitivity of the pain by increase in the sensitivity of the nerve receptors okay that their threshold gets decreased and because of that even less noxious stimulus is going to respond the patient is going to respond very exaggerated even to a less noxious stimulus so in the previous video if you remember which was about the pain physiology in that we have seen the objective and the subjective assessment of the pain so in that i have actually told you that uh, uh, the vast and the fast scale are there so in such patients in, in uh, whom you are giving continuous noxious stimulus what happens that when you actually decrease the amplitude of the pain even then the patient is feeling more pain so uh, why it occurs? It occurs because of a phenomena called as a hyperalgesia which says that there is a sensitization of the receptors. So hyperalgesia why it occurs? I hope the definition is clear. 
now why it occurs it occurs because there is sensitization now sensitization occurs at the two level it occur at the receptor level so it is called as a peripheral sensitization because receptors are at the periphery part so when the sensitization occurs at the peripheral part it is called as a or the receptor part it is called as a peripheral sensitization and if the sensitization occurs at the spinal cord level at the dorsal horn neuron level at that level it is called as a central sensitization so we are going to see one by one that how the peripheral sensitization occur and then how the central sensitization occur so peripheral sensitization simply means that the sensitization of the peripheral nerve receptors to the repeated noxious stimulus which is which basically means that there is a decrease in the threshold of the nerve receptors the other uh, threshold of the nerve receptors have decreased so that means their sensitivity will be get increased okay then how it occurs so in response to injury what is going to happen the damage to the tissue will happen now in response to that damage the tissue will start releasing certain chemicals why because tissue is actually uh, actually wants that the surrounding area becomes aware of the fact that i am injured okay so that chemicals include histamine substance p pasta gadolin serotonin bradykinin in response to injury all these chemicals will be start releasing now these chemicals will act at the nerve receptor will increase the level of the ion channels on this nerve receptors and actually going to decrease their threshold will actually going to increase their sensitivity another thing which these chemicals does is the neurogenic inflammation which is another way of increasing the sensitivity or you can say further deteriorating the condition of the patient so here in this diagram i'm sorry that not that much clear diagram this is taken from the candle only so <clears throat> here they have shown this is the area of the hyperalgesia so they have zoomed out and they have seen that there is a damage to the tissue and in response to the damage to the tissue what is going to happen the prostaglandins and the bradykinins are released now this chemicals they are going to act at the terminal okay at the terminal part or you can see at the receptor of the or or okay so the peripheral endings of the efferents which are going to the cns so and letting them what to do they are going to release a cgrp and the substance p in response to these chemicals now they are actually going to act on the blood vessel to dilate them in order to cause a vasodilation and they are also acting on the other cells surrounding cells in order to further release those chemicals so you can see this is a vicious cycle damage to the tissue damage to the tissue related to the release of certain chemicals these chemicals are going to act on the peripheral efferents Uh, on the efferents and efferents are also going to release certain chemicals these chemicals then again going to act on the surrounding cells to release the further chemicals now these chemicals will further act on the efferents so this is this has become a cycle now this is going to cause a condition which is called as a neurogenic inflammation so this vasodilation there will be redness there will be heat okay heat and redness are involved in the inflammation then you can see that edema is also going to happen because of this vasodilation so because of that what is happening that this inflammation will be get spread over a larger area by the help of an exon reflex okay so because this occurs in response to the chemicals released by the endings of the nerves it is called as a neurogenic inflammation and this occurs in the case of the peripheral sensitization another thing is that that not only the chemicals which is being released by the uh, by the damaged tissue neurotropins neurotropins are the factors which are basically the nerve growth factors involved in the growth of the nervous tissue okay they basically does the growth of the nervous system so these neurotropins also act as a mediators of the pain okay so how they act as a mediator of a pain this diagram is show, showing that so what happens here inflammation occurs because of the tissue injury now this inflammatory markers will act on the another cell like the mast cell this is going to release a nerve growth factor okay now this nerve growth factor is going to act at the peripheral ending of the c fiber 
okay so now what has happened it is going to act by the help of a trk receptor and then it is going to increase the expression of the ions more and more ion channels so that there is increase in sensitivity of these receptor or these endings towards the pain then after that it is retrogatory transport retrogated means from the periphery to the nerve cell body okay so from to the nerve cell body it is being transported in the nerve cell body it is going to increase the expression of the brain derived nerve factor which is another nerve factor and this nerve factor will actually then come at the endings which is actually released at the central part the central ending of these peri primary efferents further they are going to actually increase the excitability the sensitivity of the central we can see the dorsal horn neuron cell and they are going to contributing to the central sensitization so with this we are at the central sensitization so i hope the peripheral sensitization is clear in the hyperalgesia first will be the hyperalgesia uh, the central sensitization sorry first will be the peripheral sensitization and then there will be central sensitization so now in response to injury what is going to happen the efferents the a delta fiber and the c fibers they are going to discharge continuously in response to that the dorsal horn cell is also going to discharge continuously so a delta fiber and the c fibers they are carrying the pain sensation in response to that they are discharging continuously so the dorsal horn cell is also going to discharge continuously and this is lead to the gradual enhancement in the excitability of the dorsal horn neuron and this is called as a wind up the sensitivity gets increased so it is called as a wind up so this occurs because of the three things number one thing is that that the glutamate is going to actually you can see here that the a delta fiber and c fibers both are releasing the glutamate as a neurotransmitter to the dorsal horn cell so these glutamate is going to act with the help of the nmda receptor which is going to generate the long term potentiation long term potentiation means that for a longer time the potential will be there the action potential or can say the voltage change will remain for a longer duration so if a voltage change the activation remains for a longer duration the dorsal horn cell will remain active for a longer duration will going to transmit the pain for a longer duration okay another thing is that in response to the chronic pain in response to the continuous stimulus there is increase in the expression of these type of receptors so there is further increase in the long term potentiation another thing is that apart from the channel level there is also increase in the transcription factor expression that is going to code for the those proteins which are involved in increasing the sensitivity of the cell so that is how it is going to act at the perif ion levels also ion channel levels as well as at the genetic level also so by this you can see in this diagram also as there is increase in the stimulus number the number of the spikes which have been generated in the c is increasing and the a delta fibers are going to release only a one type of neurotransmitter glutamate which is going to act via this channels and they are actually causing the fast membrane depolarization for the transient duration only but when there is a continuous stimulation the c fibers also get activated so c fibers actually are responsible mainly they are responsible for the sensitization so they release both the glutamate as well as the substance p so glutamate is going to act via the help of that receptors ampa and nmda receptors the substance p is going to act via the help of the neurokinin a1 a uh, neurokinin 1 receptor which is actually coupled to ion channel leading to the calcium influx so because substance p is there for a longer duration as compared to the glutamate plus there is no neuro uh, neurotransmitter reuptake mechanism for the substance p so it, it will remain for a longer duration so it is going to cause the action for a longer duration okay so it will be the depolarization which is being generated is for the longer duration okay so that is how the central sensitization at the dorsal horn neuron will be there the excitability of that cell will also be get increased okay so with this we are at the end of this video to summarize hyperalgesia is a exhibited response 
to the painful stimulus it involves central sensitization and peripheral sensitization peripheral means at the receptor level central means at the dorsal neuron level in both this sensitization there is increase in the sensitivity of these neurons and there is increase in the you can see there is decrease in threshold of the these uh, nerve fibers and the pain transmission has been increased okay so with this we are at the end of this video if you like this video please like share and comment let me know in the comment section any video you want to do do for uh, do for you by me and please follow us please subscribe to our channel till then keep learning